I am at Chaco Culture National Historical Park in New Mexico. And in this video, we are going to explore Pueblo Bonito, the largest of the Chacoan ruins. There is a round trip trail that goes to the second largest great house, Chidro Kettle, which was featured in the previous video if you want to check that out. But now I am going to continue on said trail and enter through the back section of Pueblo Bonito by the canyon walls. The tower and canyon wall is adorned with various petroglyphs and other markings left by the Chacoans. There's also some cacti. And there is Pueblo Bonito, which has a lot of gigantic boulders on the grounds. I believe this is rubble from when a section of the canyon wall collapsed back in 1941, and sadly it did destroy some of Pueblo Bonito. Atop the boulder pile, there is a great view over Pueblo Benito. Just look at how expansive that is. This is absolutely incredible. Pueblo Benito here is arguably the highlight of this magnificent and historic canyon as it is the largest of the Chaco and Great Houses. It was planned out and constructed in various stages starting in 828 CE. They continued adding on to it until about 1126, so it was built over a span of 200 years. The Pueblo was totally abandoned along with all the other Great Houses around here by the end of the 13th century. The Pueblo was totally abandoned along with all the other Great Houses around here by the end of the 13th century. This was probably the most important and sacred location for the ancestral Puebloans who inhabited this region a thousand years ago. This large-scale Pueblo was planned out to be constructed in a D-shaped semicircle with a large plaza in the center, just like most Pueblos were in the region. There were over 600 rooms, and in most sections it was between four and five stories tall, though most areas of the upper floors have collapsed over time. This very large and tall freestanding adobe brick wall in the back is still standing after all this time. Though it definitely isn't stable, there are support beams holding it up now, and I don't think the picture quite shows how uneven the wall is. It is really leaning over in some spots. There are a few places here where they have built modern roofs to protect the interiors. I'm not sure what this room would have been used for, but it went down a ways. Pueblo Benito would have been the center of the Chacoan roads and trade networks. This place was connected to other regional settlements and cultures through a series of roads and trails, so luxury goods from far off places were brought to Pueblo Benito. Fairly recently, they discovered traces of Mexican cacao and some pottery shards that originated about 1200 miles away. They also mined, processed, and traded turquoise, along with some other high-end goods that were usually used for ceremonies in the kivas.
This is an unbelievably large complex, and there is a lot to go through. Being the largest great house in Chaco Canyon, Pueblo Benito had quite a few kivas, which were used as the ceremonial and political centers of the Chaco culture. This place served many roles for the Chacoan culture, including being a center of administration, trade, ceremony, hospitality, storage, and even astronomy. They buried a lot of their dead around here too. There is a section of the Pueblo where visitors can walk through a maze of rooms. Most of these first floor rooms are open air because the second and third stories and ceilings have collapsed over time, but the walls are still several stories high. Ooh. These people were not very tall. Many of these rooms were likely living units or suites for extended families. The Benito phase masonry throughout the entire complex is really impressive. This pueblo was built with veneers of shaped sandstone blocks laid on either side of a rubble core and was bonded together with adobe mortar. These rooms go on for quite a ways. Remember, there were over 600 rooms in this complex, so this is just a small fraction of what used to be. Many original Vigo remains are still in the walls, showing where these ceilings between the floors were. Look at those Vigo remains that have survived all these years. This is one of the only rooms that has managed to stay intact. And visitors are allowed to walk inside here. The ceiling and wooden beams up there are original from about 1082. It is over 900 years old. That is incredible. Because it is protected from above and the dry climate, wood artifacts like that don't really deteriorate as fast out here. Also it is noticeably cooler in here, which feels very nice as it's relatively hot today. I believe the window and door placements help create a breeze. I have now exited the structure. This is the other side of the structure I was walking through. Unfortunately, most people, including many Americans, don't know anything about this treasure. I mean, the scale and significance of this location probably should put it in the same ranks as some other important archaeological sites around the world. Here is one of the three great kivas at Pueblo Benito. 
This one is very sizable. There is a reconstructed Great Kiva like this at the Aztec Ruins National Monument, which is really cool. It shows what the Great Kivas were actually like back in the day, instead of just a hole in the ground. So check out that video if you're interested. While this Pueblo is an extremely impressive feat of engineering, there were other innovations here that didn't survive the test of time so well. The Chacoans did build a series of small canals and dams. They also built straight avenues through here, and various Chacoan roads throughout the entire region that directly connected other communities for trade. Building stuff like that requires some advanced comprehension of engineering, along with wide-scale organization and planning, something that didn't happen too often in the ancient Americas. Pueblo Benito is just magnificent. Everyone should try to visit Chaco Canyon to see this imposing and majestic piece of history. Here's an old plaque which reads visitors to the great ruins of an ancient Indian fortified town. This was placed here a long time ago by the National Geographic Society and the Smithsonian Institution, which both did archaeological work here. Off in the distance is Pueblo del Arroyo, a smaller Chaco and Great House which will start off the third segment of this Chaco Canyon series. The link will be in the description. Near Pueblo Benito is the historic Wetherill Cemetery, the burial site of a controversial figure named Richard Wetherill. He worked for the American Museum of Natural History and helped with excavations at Mesa Verde in the 1890s. He was credited with discovering the Cliff Palace, along with Keats Seal, which is now Navajo National Monument. Later on, he moved down here to excavate Pueblo Benito in 1896. But not everyone liked his methods of archaeological excavation, so he received a lot of complaints from other archaeologists, and eventually his funding was stopped, and he was banned from digging on the site. His recklessness also led to the Antiquities Act, the country's first law protecting antiquities. Since he was banned from excavating at the site, he just opened a trading post right by Pueblo Benito to sell and trade with the local Navajo and sell some knickknacks to visitors. He had mixed relations with the Navajo, some apparently liked him, but others did not and accused him of mistreatment. Then in 1910, a man named Chischilling Begay shot and killed Wetherill over a dispute between his hired hand and Navajo neighbors. While the Wetherill trading post no longer stands, his grave is just a few hundred yards from Pueblo Benito. That is interesting. So that was Pueblo Benito, the largest Chacoan great house and one of the most impressive ancient historic sites in the United States of America. It is absolutely incredible. I implore everyone to go out of their way to visit this place. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Also check out my other videos here at Chaco Canyon, including the ones on Chitro Kel, along with Pueblo del Arroyo and Casa Rinconada. Those will be linked in the description. I have filmed videos at other historic sites in the Four Corners region, along with other national parks, museums, roadside attractions, and more across the country. Thanks for watching.